Well, we've been talking about how the stretched polar vortex would eventually bring colder air to the Northeast and the Mid-Atlantic, and we finally got it as we go into the new year. It's meteorologist Joe Martucci here. Welcome to Snow Search. Next to me on your screen is not Sean Sublett, but another member of our Lee Weather team, Matt Holliner. Welcome to Snow Search. Our first time doing it with you here, and you brought the snow tie for the occasion. I really appreciate that. I feel like I need to get dressed up in my snow tie, too. Yeah, when I'm making a rare guest appearance, I have to dress the part. So, yes, I don't know if you can see. I'll, I'll try to get a little bit closer to the camera. There, there, are snow, there are snowflakes on this tie. I'm trying to motivate the snow to fall. Yes. We've been having, you know, I, I mainly cover our uh, Midwest properties at Lee Enterprises, though I hop around. Uh, and we've had snow in the Midwest. So we had a lot of snow in the Midwest. If you're in South Dakota, Nebraska, yeah. I mean, where they were able to measure it in feet. Let's just talk about snow search real quick. We're looking at next week's snow and cold threats. That is New Year's week here. Again, broad forecast for individual storms. We're not talking about, hey, it's going to start snowing at your house at 7 o'clock. We just can't do that this far up. And then we go from North Carolina on up into upstate New York. So in honor of some colder air coming our way, Matt, uh, we have this graphic here about the first sub 32 degree high temperature when it is on average and if we saw it so far. Right. So it certainly has been mild in the Atlantic. That's why the lack of snow. But, you know, when you put things in perspective, it's not unusual for December to not be that cold. And, you know, that's the thing a lot of people talk about, oh, a white Christmas. And I think the reason people get excited about a white Christmas is there are a lot of places where a white Christmas really isn't that common. So when you're looking at the average first day where you have a high temperature below 32 degrees, it's really this time of year for a lot of places, North Carolina, Virginia, New Jersey. Notice that it's around Christmas time, December 20th, 29th, the first time where you actually have a high temperature below 32, making it more likely for snow to fall. Now, you go into upstate New York, the story is a little bit different. It actually happens about a month earlier, late November. And sure enough, right on schedule, it happened. The average November 26th and it happened November 28th. It has not happened in South Jersey, Virginia, or North Carolina yet. But again, that's not unusual. So it's usually once the calendar flips to January that the colder air starts to settle in. You get closer to your coldest time of year. And then you have better snow chance as well. So it's not unusual for December to actually not be that snowy yeah there's exactly snow. and and there's some places right matt that you don't even get a guarantee of having a day below 32 especially once you get to new jersey on south here right so some we'll, years it doesn't happen yeah some years it doesn't happen so we'll take a look at our winter indexes we show you the big three the north atlantic oscillation we show you the arctic oscillation and then we show you the pacific north uh american index this is the north atlantic oscillation the nao and you see it going down and down and down as we go into the first half of the month that means cold certainly settling in as we go into this time big storm risk not a definite but the potential is there and especially when you have the arctic oscillation like you see here also it's continuing to be negative so there is a good vibe at least for colder air potential for storms it's hard to guarantee snow but at least the potential for it and then we also have our pacific north american index here going to neutral states so little will influence on the weather pattern here from the carolinas on up into new york i just want to show you the north atlantic oscillation in terms of what the different negative and positive modes mean you see when we get into that negative mode the jet stream that river of air about thirty thousand feet high Separates two air masses, kind of goes like this. We're doing the wave, doing the wave, up and down, up and down. And then the thought is that it would be wavy enough over the East Coast where if you're a snow lover, yes, you can get a nor'easter to spin off, off of that jet stream here. Again, not a guarantee. The colder air is more of a guarantee than actually snowier weather here across uh, the mid-Atlantic on up into the northeast uh noah is at least uh hinting at the colder air as we go into next week and beyond isn't that right matt yeah i really think you know if you're looking for a magic date and of course this could still change but the kind of what we're pinpointing right now is around january 4th so the end of next week like getting around next thursday the pattern starts to shift where we get into a colder pattern and potentially an opportunity for snow as we get later in the week. And for more places like, I, might, I think it's going to start a little bit earlier for upstate New York, but for Virginia down into the Carolinas, I think late week, the colder air starts to settle in and actually stick around. So what we're looking at on this map is 
how far above normal or below normal temperatures are expected for January 4th. Again, that's kind of the start date through January 10th. And you're seeing those normal temperatures across New Jersey, uh, New York, Pennsylvania, but actually a little bit, not talking about Arctic outbreaks, super cold temperatures, actually a little bit cooler than normal across much of Virginia and North Carolina. And when you're at least talking about normal temperatures for this time of year or a little bit below normal temperatures, finally, you don't have to just say, well, it's going to be another rain event. Then you have the opportunity for snow. So that's why we have hope once we get to the late part of next week for the story to change a little bit. Yeah. And, you know, average high temperatures upstate New York, we're talking about 30s for average highs as we go into next week. Pennsylvania, New Jersey, Maryland, down to Virginia in the 40s. North Carolina average highs in the 50s here in the lower 50s as we go into the early part of January. So we'll take a look at our upper level, mid-level weather pattern trend here. Uh, where you see those L's, those are areas of mid-level low pressures. And in fact, that one that you see over Canada, that's the polar vortex. And what's happening is we're going to get a trough or an area of relatively lower pressure to swing through our snow search area as we kick off the new year and into early next week. Then that kind of moves away. And then as we get into the later part of the week, another trough or area of low pressure makes its way into the southeast. Now that's important because you see it keep going to the east not really cutting up the coast. So what this is kind of telling me is as we go into next week, we have two opportunities or maybe uh, not opportunities, depending on how you look at it, for snow as we go into this time. One is going to be the early part of the week. That would be for places further north, upstate New York, some lake effect snow there. And then in the middle part of the week, we are talking about a storm looking likely in the deep south. Now, how much does it cut up north and how much precipitation does it throw into places even like Virginia and Maryland still remains to be seen. We'll talk about that in a minute. But if you like winter weather, at least there's some signs here. And Matt, we'll kick it off with that early week, really that New Year's Day system moving through. Yeah, we're actually starting this future cast, our future precipitation at midnight new year's eve so that's a very key time yeah uh, normally course. midnight it, normally midnight we don't talk about very much but on new year's eve it's actually pretty important midnight a lot of people are going to be out and yes we are looking at the potential for snow for not many places but in new york yes some lake effect snow already beginning but notice that for many new year's eve is looking dry now as we go through new year's day we do expect that area of snow to start to show up in a few other places getting down to Pennsylvania in the mountains of Virginia, maybe, I think more in West Virginia. But I think, again, for a lot of folks besides Western Pennsylvania, maybe Western Virginia, and even New Year's Day is going to be dry. But just a heads up in New York, the possibility of snow, especially near the lakes, that lake effect snow. And again, it could begin New Year's Eve and then continue through New Year's Day, but kind of a short system, not the strong system. And it's probably already out of here on Tuesday. So we're not talking about a lot of snow with this system, but yes, just Heads up, because we know that's a key time, New Year's Eve into New Year's Day. Watch out for New York, Western Pennsylvania, and Western Virginia. As the ball drops, snow may fall from the sky. We'll, uh, we'll take a look at our jet stream as we go into next week. Um, and we are expecting that jet stream to stay in the southern tier of the United States. Classic El Nino setup here, where you're talking about chillier air, especially in the eastern half of the country, really in the deep south, getting into the Carolinas. We talked about that. What we're looking for is as we go into the midweek, really second, third, fourth, we get a little bit of a bump in that jet stream. The jet stream comes further north here, and then a storm forms along and rides along that jet stream. So this is our early forecast for the second to fourth time frame here. We're looking at a low to medium impact wintry event for the mountains of Virginia, West Virginia, down into North Carolina, into Tennessee, places like Hickory, even Roanoke could see some snow with this, Bristol, Virginia, for sure. And then once you get to the what we call coastal plain, those are the flat areas from New Jersey all the way down to the Carolinas, looking like plain rain, probably going to be a chilly rain, not these 50s and 60s with rain like we've seen in December, probably more like 30s and 40s with rain. So that this is not our storm for the I-195 and the I-95 corridor, but we are talking about a step down in the thermometer as we go into the New Year's week here. 
We'll call it seasonable air. No big cold shot expected next week, but it's going to at least take the edge off of this warm pattern that we have. Of course, do we get any snow with this? It looks like upstate New York to get hit with lake effect snow around January 1st. And then first significant mountain snow, keyword mountain snow, possible. That's second to the fourth time frame here as that storm system moves through the southeast. We're going to get northerly winds coming through the mountains with the elevation and those northerly winds should be enough for some wintry weather there. Um, I think for where the population is in the mountains, it's not significant. It's really those, those mountain tops, Matt, those mountain tops where you see the top of the, uh, the very last trees, you know, that could see that significant snow. So it's something here, um, but we're not looking for any big classic nor'easter as we go into our new year's week here. So with that being said, we're going to wrap it up like we do every week here. Matt's his first turn. I gave him a heads up. I said, I'm going to ask you, what's the one thing that you're searching for, whether or otherwise? Matt, have at it. And there's really only one thing on my mind right now. I did go, I uh, did my undergraduate degree at the University of Texas. I am a Longhorn, and I am looking forward to New Year's Day. We are finally back. I'm going to say it. Texas is back. We are in the college football playoff. That's how I designed. We won a conference championship. We're in the playoff. Texas is back. Quite frankly, I'll I'll be I'm happy right now just getting to the playoff after the really bad stretch we've been through. But if we could win a game and get to the national championship game, that's what I'm searching for. A win New Year's Day to get to that national championship game. That's just icing on the cake. I am so ready for that game. I'm going to be hyped. I'm taking the next day off. I'm going to enjoy that game and hopefully, hopefully a win. Welcome. Welcome. There we go. Welcome. Well, you know, uh, my alma mater, Rutgers University, the uh, head coach, prior head coach for football, Kyle Flood, is your offensive coordinator. So uh, we'll see what happens. I wouldn't be upset if Texas uh, won it all on that. So I'll, uh, uh, I'll be, I'll be, I'll definitely I'll be, be thinking of upset. I'll be, I'll be over the moon. You'll be over the moon. <laughs> yes, exactly. Um, okay. So, you know, I think I'll keep it in the sports realm for this one. Um, but I'm going to switch from football to basketball. I'm coaching a fifth grade basketball team this winter, uh, for the first time we have our first game next week. We're going to look to see if we get a win. I shouldn't say our first game, first game I'm coaching it. I, you know, we'll have to do a snow search for Texas. Maybe one of these weeks, we'll, we'll, we'll see what happens here. Oh boy. You don't really get people worked up. <laughs> Even just saying the word snow search, just searching for snow. People will be like, what? Right. But snow is bigger in Texas, right? We've come to that conclusion. Uh, well, the snow events usually are smaller compared to, uh, to the Northeast. But boy, the excitement for snow in Texas. Oh, yeah, that's that's Texas size right there. All right. Good to know. <laughs> I'll, keep, I'll keep that in mind for us here. Um, so for Matt Hollander, I'm Joe Martucci. Thanks for watching Snow Search. We'll be back with you next week. We'll have Sean Sublet back. We do thank Matt for his guest appearance on Snow Search this week. And we will talk with you all soon. Have a wonderful new year, everyone. And enjoy.